It's October, which means it's that time when Adobe release big updates for all of their apps. And we're going to take a look at what's new in Lightroom Classic. There's a few things to kind of look at. It doesn't feel as maybe as big of a year as we have had previously. Like we've had things like Lens Blur, which is quite an interesting new tool to add a bit of depth and stuff like that. And of course, Point Color, which I use all the time for color grading, but it's still worth taking a look. So let's dive in and have a look. The first kind of big headline feature, I guess, is generative remove, which I totally appreciate was already in Lightroom. So it maybe doesn't feel as much of a game changing thing, but it is now out of early access. It does seem to work a little bit better. It seems a little bit faster as well. So let's take a look at it with this photo here. So I've got this photo with this tripod on the beach. It's a three legged thing, Charles 2.0, which is actually the tripod I use for pretty much all of these videos. We're going to remove it from the photo though. So let's go ahead and use the remove tab here. We're using generative AI. You can see there's no early access banner on here anymore. All we have to do is just draw over the tripod like so. It doesn't have to be super exact. And it's going to do this red mask. We click remove. Lightroom's going to do its thing, work out exactly what's going on, and then actually just fill in the blanks like so. And it's done a really good job. We get three variations. I actually think variation one was completely fine. Yeah, they're not majorly different. I'm going to go with variation one because I think it is completely fine. That actually looks really, really good. If we go back here, that's not bad at all, is it? That is not bad at all. But let's imagine that it was not very good. Let's reset that and actually use the other update to this tool, which is detect objects. Now for this photo, it didn't really matter too much, but if we tick this on and now mask over the uh, the tripod, I've gone for a slightly smaller brush just because it was probably a little bit unnecessarily big, but I still won't go too you know careful with it. It's now going to try and detect the object I'm trying to mask. And while it might look initially like it's done a terrible job, <laughs> because if you've ever used the masking tool where you select objects, it will select them extremely perfectly. Actually, when it comes to generative remove, you want a nice bit of space around the object. So context for what it should fill it in with, and also to make sure that you are absolutely getting everything. If it did it perfectly to the object, it just, it just isn't going to work as well. It's going to look a bit weird. So again, if I click remove, let's just do that so we can see what it does. And again, a really good job. There is a little bit of a weird thing going on over there at the kind of C wall. There we go. That looks pretty good. Maybe let's just try the third one just to see what that's like. Lovely. It's even filling in kind of little little wave splashes on the sea wall over there. So it's pretty cool, works really well. And actually, if you do have something that you need a little bit of help masking, the detect objects tick box, is a great way of doing that. Okay, so let's look at the other kind of main feature of this update, which is content credentials. So we're gonna right click to export this photo with the tripod. Let's go export like this. And if you now scroll down, you'll see content credentials. Now this is in early access, but this allows you to add various things to the photo. So a little bit like metadata, I suppose. So things like who you are, producer Gareth Evans, right, connected accounts, but also, and I think probably most importantly in some ways, edits and activity. So you can attach what you've done to the photo. How have you edited it? And specifically, and I think this is probably why it's one of the most important parts, has AI been used. And that means that you can specifically point out that AI has been used or that it hasn't been used. There's loads of situations where that's really important. Also your name, right? And your socials and things like that are obviously very important as well. I'm certainly not trying to underplay that, but just the fact that you can say, look, here's the photo and I didn't use AI and you can back that up from Adobe's side, I definitely didn't use AI. Now that's great for competitions, right? Which we've seen over the last couple of years, AI has been a part of, and it's maybe been a little bit tricky to work out definitely what's real and what's not. Well, with this, it's it's a step in the right direction. I'm not saying this is gonna fix everything. I'm not saying it's perfect at all, but it's, it's, it's a step in the right direction of being able to regulate what's real, what's been used with AI, and actually get some kind of authenticity to photography like that. So those are the kind of two big things in this update, but there are some other smaller enhancements like there always are. I will say Lightroom Classic does seem a lot quicker to load up, to actually get the photos going, to every, everything just seems to be running better, which is the first time I've ever properly noticed that, but it is a significant difference from pre-update. Really genuinely quite significant. So if you've had a problem with a slow Lightroom, 
this update might fix that. There's also now support for tethering Nikon cameras, which is not going to affect everyone. It might not even affect that many people, but you know, it's in there. And things like adding denoise to a whole different bunch of raw formats, which is really useful because if you're using a raw format or a camera with a raw format that isn't currently supported, you just can't use that denoise feature and it is really powerful. So it's useful to have that available to, I think, more people. Pretty much it. Like I say, it's some small enhancements under the hood and stuff like that, but not, not a bad update at all. And some of this is very useful, but at the same time, you know, it doesn't have that wow factor that we saw, for example, with the lens blur update, which felt pretty big and the point color, which is so useful and stuff like that. But like I said, they can't all be these massive game changing updates. But let me know what you think. I'd love to know what you think about all this stuff down in the comments. That's always super interesting. Otherwise, of course, you can see a full list of all the kit we use for these videos down in the description. Don't forget to like, subscribe as well, because there's new stuff all the time. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.